Happy Monday, everybody. It's Coach Elizabeth here with Monday Morning Manifestation. And on today's show, we're going to talk about how to negotiate a better salary. So we're going to pull wisdom today from Chris Voss. He wrote this incredible book, Never Split the Difference. Um, he was a former FBI hostage negotiator, so he knows his shit. Um, and he also talks about how we're negotiating with people all day. We're negotiating with clients, bosses, children, and we're negotiating with ourselves. So these are amazing tools and incredible insights that anybody can use, even if you're not currently in the corporate world. So first off, he says, let the other guy go first. So I feel like most of us know this, but it's really hard to do, right? So if you're trying to negotiate for a higher salary, your boss already has a range in mind, a certain percentage increase that they're willing to give. But the thing is, is that at least when I was managing people, I was given a budget of money and it was really up to me um, to decide which percentage of that I wanted to allocate to each one of my team members. So there is some wiggle room here. There is an opportunity for you to negotiate a higher piece of that pie. But one of the key thing is, one of the key things is you have to let them talk first because you could go in and say, uh, 5% on my base is what I want. And you feel really good about that, but you never know what, you know, what the other side was going to come with. Were they going to come with 10, 20, 30? You have no idea. So let them talk first, fight every urge in your body to say something first, sit there in silence, be comfortable in the silence and let them go first. The second tip is, to establish a range. So I tell clients this all the time when we're negotiating their salaries. A lot of times it's for new jobs. Um, sometimes the recruiter will say, oh, this is our cap, right? And even though that cap might be where you are right now, um, you wanna establish a higher range. So say the base on a job is 150. You wanna go in there and say that you want maybe 160 to 185, right? You wanna go in with a higher number and hopefully, you know, they'll settle on the lowest end. So you should always, your range should always, your lowest point of your range should always still be a point that you're still very happy with, right? That you're still very comfortable with because odds are they're always going to try to get you to come down. And with this, sometimes they'll say, oh, well, I said 150 and you said 165. So let's split the difference. Chris says, never do that. He says it's like wearing one brown shoe and one black shoe. It just doesn't work. It's not worth it. It never matches up to your expectations, right? So just make sure that whatever that bottom range is, that you're willing to have your bluff called, right? If they say we can't give you that, then you've got to be able to bounce. You've got to be okay with walking away from the opportunity, right? Or dealing with whatever sort of repercussions might come up, which leads us to the next point, which is really be, be pleasantly persistent on non-salary items. So this could be negotiating an extra week of vacation. This could be negotiating more money in your expense report for TNE. &E. This could be more time um, working remotely, right? Maybe you ask for two days to work from home, something like that. There's a couple of things that can happen with this. So your boss can either say, um, okay, yes, I can give you that, right? And you have to be persistent about it. Don't be like a dog with a bone. Don't let this shit slide. You have to have it. These are non-negotiables, right? So the person will either say, okay, you know, we can kind of meet in the middle. I'll give you that. Or they'll say, you know what? My hands are really tied. I can't give you more vacation. So then they might go back and revisit that pool of money that they have to divvy up between all of their team members and give you a little bit of a bigger slice so that it will cover the request that you had for extra vacation or something like that. Okay. The next thing that Chris says, um, is to really use the word fair. Okay. So don't let this word be used against you though. There's, there's the flip side of this. So a lot of times your bosses will try to guilt you into accepting a low ball offer by saying, well, this is what's fair. Cause then it really makes you feel like a jerk, right? Like you're the one who doesn't want to be fair or you are trying to get more out of them than you deserve. Well, just recognize that if they start throwing around the F word fair, you know, it's, it's a manipulation technique, but on the other side, if you can get them to come up to whatever, you know, the low end of your range was, then you can express your contentment by saying, I think that's fair instead of, you know, cheering, screaming silently in your head, just say, okay, thank you very much. I think that's fair. Right. And move on, but watch out for that F word. 
the other thing chris says to do is to really try to kind of establish an emotional connection with them so you can say you know if they're saying i can't give you this amount of money you can ask you know how you can justify getting them to that number or something like that right like what can i do how can we make this work um what are the terms that i need to be successful for this and and also ask them you know kind of get to the root of why they don't want to give it to you what are their fears are there fears that maybe your counterparts will find out that you're making a sick amount more than they are uh is your boss afraid that maybe if he or she gives you more vacation time that you won't be as present and involved or that if you work remotely for two days a week that you won't meet deadlines ask them kind of point blank like what what you need to do to make them feel comfortable with this right because it's it's never really about the money um they always have some sort of budget there's always flex space they always are planning on negotiating a lot of times where we cut ourselves off at the knees especially women is we're trying to be likable so we don't even try negotiating but you really need to wrap your head around everything being a negotiation you can use this with your spouse with your kids with your family members whoever it is if you come at it from a clear intention of trying to make both parties happy then it's perfectly acceptable to negotiate and it won't make you uh any less likable